Welcome to McCarthy Math Academy, where I teach you how to rock the FSA. Today we are going to be working on maths.3.oa.2.5. Um, so we are going to be working with multiplication properties, like the commutative property, the associative property, and the distributive property. So, let me teach ya. Get going. So we have example one. It says, write an expression equal to 2 plus 1 times 8. So here's my equation editor. I only want to put the answer in here. So I'm just writing an expression. An expression means there is no equal sign. Okay, an expression equal to this. So here I'm seeing some characteristics of... Um, the distributive property. So I'm going to go ahead and use this using the distributive property to write an expression using the distributive property. So it looks like they've taken the factor 3 and they've broken it or into 2 plus 1. So now I just need to distribute the rest. So 2 times 8 plus 1 times 8. I don't have to solve it, I just have to write an expression equal to it. That would be one possible answer. Um, you could also look at this from a commutative property stance. So if you had 2 times, oops, sorry, 2 plus 1 times 8, and you consider this to be a factor, and this to be a factor, you could swap it around and write 8 times 2 plus 1. That would be like using the commutative property. So there's another possible answer choice. And a final one that I'm thinking of is just rewriting it as 3 times 8. So the question says drag the numbers to the boxes to create a different expression that is equal to 6 times 2 times 7 in parentheses. So we can't, like this would make sense for a computerized test because to drag it when it says drag it. But third grade right now, you're not taking it on the computer this year. Only fifth grade is for math. Um, so we're just going to kind of act it out. It was in the item spec, so I want to make sure that we, that we touch base on it. But I think they would just have you write the numbers in there. Okay? So we have 6 times... 2 times 7 in parentheses, and this looks very similar to my associative property because I have um, more than two factors that I'm multiplying and I'm grouping them differently. So there's a, there's a couple different ways that you could write this. So I'm just going to write, um, let's see, 2 first times 6 times 7. Okay, and if you were to drag it, you would take this 6, and you would put that there, you would take the 2, and you would do that there, and you would take the 7, and you would drag it there, but I don't think that they're going to have you do that on the test. I just want to present it the way that it should be. Um, you could have a bunch of different examples, though, too. You could do 6 times 2 times 7, you know, using the commutative property inside there. You could do 7 times 2 times 6. You know, there's a couple different ways that you could go about doing this. Um, see how many you can come up with and maybe put them in the comment section below. Um, so we have our equations here and then we have numbers here. And what we have to do is match what belongs in the empty space. So here I see 6 times what equals 8 times 6. Well, gee, this looks like the commutative property. 6 times what 6, 6, I'm backwards, 6 times what equals, switch it, 8 times 6. So what goes in this blank? It's an 8. So I'm going to put a little checkeroo right there on the 8. And I don't want to do anything else. Just put it where it goes. The 8 should go there, so that's my match. Don't write anything in there. Here I've got 6 times 8. I'm going to write it over here so we can see a little better. Equals what times 8 plus 1 times 8. Oh, I'm running out of space. Okay, well, it looks like they took this 6 and they broke it into 
a sum of 1 and, well, 1 plus what equals 6? 1 plus 5. So 5, that would make sense because 5 times 8 equals 40. 1 times 8 equals 8. 40 plus 8 equals 48. And so we all know from my song multiples, 6 times 8 is really great. That's why the product is 48. If you haven't seen that, go see it. It'll help you get fast with your multiplication. Just look on my other YouTube videos. Um, back to this, though. So what went in the missing spot? It was a 5, so I'm just going to mark the 5, and that is it. Nothing else. And finally, I have 2 times 3 times 8, with my grouping here, my parentheses, equals 3 times what times 8? Well, I see 3, and I see 3. I see 2. Oh, I don't see 2. I see 8. I see 8. So I must have the associative. This was the, the distributive. The last one is the, the associative property. I am missing a 2 there, so I check my 2. And if this were tic-tac-toe, I would win 3 in a row. But it's not tic-tac-toe. We're practicing for the FSA. So don't write anything else on here unless it is a check mark for the answer that you think. Okay? Um, this one's really, really difficult. An equation is shown. 4 times 9 equals 9 times what? What is the missing value? Oh, this one isn't difficult. I was joking with you. It's very easy. Which property do you think this is representing? Right, the commutative property. 4 times 9 equals 9 times 4. Oh, man. That was like so easy that it wasn't even fun. Last one. It's multi-select. This one is, I'm not joking this time, this one could be slightly challenging for you. So let's take a close look at it. I will let you know that most kids would probably get this one wrong. Because they don't stop to think. So stop to think. I'm going to show you how to stop and think. Okay. Feeling a little silly now. All right. Select all the expressions, that means no equal sign, that could be used to find 8 times 3. Basically, which ones are equal, not to be confused with expressions, we don't have equal signs here, but which one of these expressions are also equal to this? 8 times 3. Well, 3 times 8. That's the commutative property. Therefore, it would be equal. This equals 24. This equals 24. So this is correct. But I am not finished! Mm. 2 plus 4 times 3. Well, parentheses say, do me first! Do me first! Do me first! So let's do them first. 2 plus 4 equals 6 times 3 equals 18. Is 18 equal to 24? No, it's not. 18 is equal to 18. That's not right. Don't pick that one. <sighs> um, I can't fix my necklace. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, wrong way. All right, fixed it. Don't say you can't, because you can't. Note to self. All right, now, oh, I've got more parentheses. Parentheses say, do me first, do me first. 4 times 2 equals 8. 8 times 3 equals 24. Is that equal? Yes! It is equal. All right. Parentheses again. Do me first. Oh, oh, oh. Me, 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 me. 3 plus 5 equals 8 times 3 equals 24. It's a magic number. All right. Now we have two sets of parentheses. Which one do I do? It doesn't matter. I'm going to do the other one first because I'm going to show you. It doesn't matter. Well, I'll go from left to right. Stick with left to right. All right. So 5, five times 3 equals 15 plus 9. 15 plus 9. I'm good at math, but sometimes it's hard to do in my head. Equals, oops, 24. Oh, this one is equal to 24. That's correct. And now we have 15 times 9. 
Well, boys and girls, that would be a lot, and you won't see anything past 10 times 10 unless you're doing multiples of 10 for third grade. So, it's wrong. Don't pick that one. That's how you solve it. Before I sign out for today, I want to leave you with this inspirational thought from Ann Landers. She says, opportunities are usually disguised as hard work, so most people don't recognize them. In other words, work hard at everything that comes your way. Like this math stuff, this math FSA, this math common core test that's coming your way. Work hard because it will provide an opportunity for you in the future in some way, in some form. Be one of the people that recognizes that this is an opportunity don't give up. Keep working hard. You can do it.